What is going on guys? Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you the battle for week 3 of season 2 of the UBL and this week we are up against Irish Emerald and his Wexford Whale Lords and before I get into the team just a reminder that if you guys liked this video or found it helpful please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button as it helps us out a lot and let's do more cool stuff for you guys and if you have not done so already please feel free to check out Irish Emerald's channel it will channel not channeled uh <laughs> channel it will be linked in the description below but anyway on to the team want to give huge shout outs to root who gen my team for this week and danza who once again recorded my battle for this week so thank you so much guys but as for the team so looking at irish's team well first of all i want to preface this by saying that i am currently two days away Actually, by the time this video goes out, but at the time I'm recording this and the time that the game happened, I am one day or two days away from being at the end of five med, uh, med school exams in a span of nine days. So that was oof. There was <laughs> I was basically on my deathbed at the time that this battle happened. So, I mean, like it was just kind of one of those like, oh, my gosh, when is this going to end? But let's play some Pokemon. It's a nice way to be able to kind of unwind from everything that had been going on so yeah currently at death's door so if i sound weird i apologize for that but irish's team is just very very scary it has sticky web it has a bunch of huge offensive threats and even has just some annoying defensive pokemon so it's really just going to be kind of an interesting match to try to deal with it's my first time going up against a zero aura so i'm pretty excited to see how that goes and then of course hoopa you while it's something that i wouldn't necessarily draft myself unless it was like a super cheap mon or something like that just like criminally undervalued i really don't think that i would end up drafting it but either way hoopa you zero aura dermanitan mega bee drill like Azelf, all of those are insane offensive threats that I am really scared to have to deal with it. To, but yeah, to deal with. Sorry, I'm like tripping over my words, guys. I told you I'm dead. So if you don't want to just mute this video, if you don't want to hear me dying at this point. <laughs> but anyway, on to the team. Um, so I'm bringing the six mods that I chose. I felt had, I don't know, I was kind of being risky, kind of not necessarily. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm being risky this week. I'm being risky in what I am bringing, so I think it can pay off as I think these mons have a very, very good matchup, and I hope that it does. So the first mon I'm bringing is my Hoopa U counter, or Hoopa U response, it's not really a counter because as soon as Hoopa U goes for uh, Hyperspace Fury, then this doesn't really do anything anymore, but really it's just kind of find out what Hoopa set it is, because if it's a Scarf set, I come in, take a Hyperspace Fury, and then die to another Hyperspace Fury. If it is not a Scarf set, then I'm able to U-turn out and play around it. So Mew with the Colberberry, U-turn, Roost, Will-O-Wisp, and Defog, or Super Fangs, not Defog, sorry, uh, <laughs> is my way of playing around Hoopa. And man, this is this entire team builder is a mess. Sorry about that, guys. My brain is all over the place just thinking about diseases, pharma, uh, pharmacodynamics, pharmacology, all of that stuff. It's just like, that's what's running through my head right now. But yeah, so the Mew is my Hoopy U answer. The speed is enough to outspeed Hoopy U through the most, or maxed out my HP so I could take hits as well as possible. And then through the rest, really into defense and some into attack and special defense just to maximize my EVs. Next up, we have Scizor. And this is the Mon that has Defog. Sorry, I was thinking ahead already. But Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Defog, and Roost. This is kind of my way of just silencing his Mega Beedrill, just making it so Mega Beedrill guaranteed will not do crap against me because i mean yeah mega b is annoying but scissor really just kind of puts a complete stop to it to where i'm not worried about it at all so i mean that's why we have the defensive scissor right there just very defensive enough attack i believe to oko i believe to oko b drill after rock something to that effect i think it's just like no investment b drill i one hit ko that thing after rocks and then just a speed for a creep and then through the rest into defense next up we have a dragon dance payapa coma o with dragon dance close combat dragon claw and poison jab um the speed is enough to i believe outspeed what was it? I believe it was to outspeed Adamant Darmanitan was the speed creep that I was going for. And really just the coverage hits his entire team 
very, very hard. Once I get up to plus one, I will outspeed everything that's not scarfed, and with my combination of attacks, we'll be able to absolutely plow through his team, uh, depending on what sets he ends up bringing. The Piapa is because Azelf is a threat, and so this is just kind of a way of luring Azelf in, putting it in range of Bullet Punch from my Scizor. Next up, we have the Seismitoad with Stealth Rock, Knockoff, Poison Jab, and Earthquake. This is just kind of my way of getting rocks up and just disrupting his team, putting it in range of Scolipede and Gardevoir to potentially clean up later, and rocks are essential for getting damage off on the Dermanitan who absolutely runs through my team otherwise, and then knock off just for getting rid of annoying choice scarves, annoying leftovers, annoying berries, what have you with that. The speed is just a speed creep. The spadef, I believe, is to live a... I believe it's a timid choice specs leaf storm guarantee or it might just be a regular leaf storm i don't remember uh how bulky size toad is but i mean it was to live a leaf storm i will from i believe choice scarf wrote him not specs specs just blows me away but I believe to live a Leaf Storm from Choice Scarf Rotom from Full Guaranteed in order to get up my rocks or get a knockoff, what have you. Poison Jab for the Sylveon and also to maybe potentially get a Poison. And then Earthquake for like the Zera Aura Probo Pass, just a harder hit on things that I don't necessarily want to knock off or Poison Jab. And then next up, we have Buginium Z, Swords Dance, Scolipede with Mega Horn and Poison Jab, just Dual Stab, and then Protect. I, uh... I decided to forego, I was trying to think of how to word that, decided to forego Earthquake on this set for Protect just because I wanted to make sure that I would be able to outspeed like Choice Scarf or Manitan. Like if we come in on a double down or something, I want to be able to Protect and then basically all but guarantee that my Scolipede is the fastest mod out there. So that's what I was going for right there. The speed is enough to guarantee to outspeed Darmanitan, again, like I said, at plus one. And then I was able to go adamant, luckily, in order to hit as hard as possible. And and then just kind of maximize my EVs a little bit with the HP and the defenses. And then finally, we have a Choice Scarf Gardevoir because Moonblast is insanely spammable against his team. If Proba Pass is down and I have rocks up, I can just spam Moonblast and essentially just collect my kills. Like Mega B can take one, but it really doesn't enjoy it. I think it might even be too it KO'd by Modest Moonblast after rocks. So yeah, Gardevoir is an insane threat against him. Uh, dual Stab's really all I need with Healing Wish being able to bring back up my Coma O or Scolipede. Like if they got heavily damaged breaking through his team, then Guard of War can healing wish them back up so that I have another chance to win with them in the late game. And then HP ground because with Trace I will be able to trap the Probo Pass, so like counter trap him kind of thing. Oh yeah, by the way, the speed on Scizor was for Probo Pass so that it couldn't trap me. But yeah, this is so I can counter trap it and then hit it with a four times super effective HP ground. I could run Focus Blast, but against my team he's probably going to run Chopple for the Scizor, the Scolipede, the Como. Really just Chopple makes a lot more sense than Shuka, so that's why I went with HP ground over Focus Blast. The speed uh, with my investment, because I went modest, the speed, I speed crept Zero Aura and Mega B Drill speed creeping my Alolan Persian. So I went really aggressive on the creep this week, and I'm hoping that it will pay off. So yeah, that is a team kind of blew through that, but that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And also running low on time because I have to go get back and study. But let's just go ahead and hop right on over to the battle. Alrighty, here we are with the team preview at the very least. And um, I'm looking at his team. And I'm thinking that, wow, he brought nothing that I really expected. I mean, like, I expected a couple of those things, but I really expected the Hoopa to come just because Hoopa's such a threat. Same with Zero Aura and Salamence. So the three of the biggest threats on his team, he did not bring. What he did bring was kind of something that I was just kind of like, huh? Well, I mean, I guess we just... We have to just uh, adapt to what we are given, and let's just go ahead and jump right into it, Like, a, or I am going to leave my Sizotoad in. Yeah, let's go ahead and start the battle. So yeah, leading with my Sizotoad, like I said, I'm thinking that he's going to be leading with maybe something like the... I mean, I was thinking like maybe the Dramanitan, the Rotom, either way I could live hits and get up my rocks, but he does end up leading with the Beedrill, which is... Fine, I mean, Sizotoad's going to be able to take a big hit, but there's nothing Beedrill can do uh, in order to one-shot me and completely prevent the rocks. So, yeah, I'm just going to immediately go for my rocks. I mean, he still has the Rotom and the Hitmontop to potentially defog and rapid spin 
Uh, I think it's respectively, did I put those in the right order? But either way, Rotom can defog, him on top can spin. He does a crap load with U-turn, indicating that that is, I mean, it could be adamant damage, but it also could be higher roll with Jolly, and I am just going to get those up as he goes into the Rotom. And I'm thinking, okay, well, Rotom isn't immediately going to defog. If he immediately knocks me out with the... If he immediately knocks me out with Leaf Storm, then I go into Sculpine and pressure him. But either way, I just want to get rid of whatever item this Rotom has. He does burn me as I am able to get rid of the Rotom's leftovers. And at this point, I am thinking, okay, I am just going to rocks until I die because just force him to kill me. And then I do have two things that can pressure the Rotom really hard. But as you will see, I misclick. Now, this was gigantic. I mean, I 100% meant to click rocks here and anybody that knows me knows that the way I play my uh, rockers a lot of time is to just rock until they die just force my opponent to have the rocks up and then to knock me out to where I can pressure them but unfortunately because I did misclick the poison jab I will not have my rocks up I'm forced to go into something that ends up being my Mew and I take the foul play I mean my Cobra Berry gets popped but that's not really a huge deal because I mean like he doesn't have the Hoopa so I don't have to worry about this but considering that my Mew is now in he's gonna go into his Aroaquanid not take rocks damage I really mm, that that misclick is hurting me quite a bit already because I mean Araquanid is going to come in it's not going to take 25% the damage from you reveals that this Araquanid is in fact near max if not max defense and that would have been really nice to get that extra 25% off to open the door more for Scolipede or Como later but now that I do have my Seismitoad in against the Araquanid I really would like to knock off and get rid of his leftovers but unfortunately because I misclicked I'm forced to set up rocks so he does get up the sticky web and yeah I mean this is just the misclick is really kind of starting a snowball effect at this point would have loved to have the rocks up and just let my seismitoad go down. So as it stands, because of me misclicking, I not only... Well, I mean, I do eventually get my rocks up, but Araquanid's at higher health, still has its leftovers, and he was able to get a sticky web all because of the misclick on Poison Jab. So, I mean, that really, really, really sucks for me, but I do think I still have... I do think I still have the potential to play around that. As Rotom's going to come in, this time I am just going to sack my Seismitoad off uh, to whatever Rotom wants to go for and try to pressure. But the difference is, unfortunately, at this point, now I have the dropped speed. So, I mean, really, this is what the situation would have been initially had I simply gone for the Stealth Rock until I died like I wanted to. However, because of the misclick, he now has Sticky Web, forced to protect on this turn, and then I really wanted to be aggressive and go for a Swords Dance, but I thought that, that really, I don't know, I really thought that that wasn't overall worth it, and then plus Poison Jab on something is going to do some damage, potentially even get a Poison. Goes into his Hitmon top, I mean, I could have guessed that this would be his answer to Scolipede. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get the poison. So I mean, a little bit unfortunate right there, but him on top has to have Stone Edge in order to knock me out. But either way, my play at this point is to go for the Swords Dance because a single minus or a single plus one poison jab does more than two minus one poison jabs. So that's what I'm going to go for is he goes for Seismic Toss and I'm thinking, okay, well... There's a, I mean, if he just goes for Seismic Toss, maybe he doesn't have Stone Edge. So, I mean, either way, at this point, no matter what his coverage is, my play is to just go for the Poison Jab and try to two-hit KO this Hitmon Top. So that is exactly what I am going to do with the Scolipede. If he has no uh, attack investment, then my Scolipede actually has about a 50-50 chance to live a Stone Edge. So he does reveal the Stone Edge, so it turned out that he just had the Seismic Toss into Stone Edge, and he does knock me out. Had he gotten, or had I gotten the roll in my favor... There's honestly a very good chance that the game would have just ended because then I could have knocked out everything on his team with the attacks from my Scolipede. But unfortunately, it's not gets a higher roll, so now I am very much in the back. My speed control is basically dead. I want to keep the rocks up because I need the damage on Beedrill and Darmanitan in order to be able to win the game. So instead of being able to go into my Scizor and immediately defog away the Sticky Web, I'm just going to try to set up with Como. Maybe this thing can break through and Mew or Mega Scizor in the back can eventually win the game. But he does even have the Toxic as well. So he has all the moves to prevent my setup, which is unfortunate. And so now I can't just stick with the plus one. I have to try to go for plus two. I have to just 
out try to outspeed every non-scarf thing on his team and then maybe with the right amount of damage i can take home the win potentially goes into araquanid and uh, once again, this Araquanid was at full health coming in on rocks, so now it is, it is at 75. And keep in mind, had I not misclicked, the Araquanid would be not only at 50%, but below 50% because I would have been able to knock off the lefties as well. So, um, yeah, at this point, now that I'm plus two, I'm just going to try to go for a Dragon Claw, try to knock out this Araquanid and maybe put in some damage or put in some work on his team. But, yeah, Araquanid lives with less than 25, so I know I keep going back to that. But that was honestly just such a huge, huge, huge um, misclick on my end. Just not getting up rocks, allowing him to get this, the webs and not getting the damage I needed on the things I needed. So this is looking very bad. He even gets the reflect up. So I'm just like, well, crap, now I can't, even though I outspeed, I'm not going to be able to get sufficient damage on things like Sylveon, like the Rotom. Uh, I just won't be able to knock those things out. I mean, I will be able to eventually knock out the hitman on top, but not after he, or not until he lowers my attack. And I'm just kind of like, okay, how do I win this? Like, I need to get Dermanitan to come in, but then I somehow need it to also switch back out so I can defog. And I save my Como at this point because if I'm somehow able to defog at some point, I will be able to Healing Wish up my Como, potentially set up on a Choice Locked Dermanitan or Beedrill, and potentially win the game if I get sufficient chip damage. So that's why I decided to save my Como right there, instead of going for the attack on Rotom. And unfortunately, this is going to come back to bite me, as he will go for the Will-O-Wisp, and my uh, Scizor, or my Mega Scizor will be burnt. So this is... This is looking very, very not good. And in fact, this is probably the play that I, this is probably the play that I regret the most just because, I mean, I should have just let Como go down. I mean, the reflect was still up. I should have just left Como in, gotten more damage off on this Rotom, put it even lower to where maybe Scizor can kill it with bullet punch after rocks or something to that effect. But in my mind, I was trying to keep the Como alive to potentially win the game. So yeah, I'm just going to go into Gardevoir at this point because the Reflect is still up. We'll not be able to kill anything, kill the Rotom with my special moves. And I am just going to go for the Psyche. If I can get a Spadef drop on the Sylveon, then I will be able to just kill something on his team. But Sylveon comes in, reveals to be defensive, and I'm just like, oh, well, not a whole lot I can do. I'm going to fish a little bit, see if I can get like a crit or a Spadef drop at this point. But that's not the case. He will be able to just wish up and... Yeah, now I'm thinking that this is not looking very good. Gardevoir is not going to be doing a whole lot in this instance. So I'm going to end up switching out, go into my Mew just to take the Moonblast and try to chip down the Sylveon. Because maybe if I can put the Sylveon low, then plus one Como will be able to clean it up with a Poison Jab. Because at this point, if I can somehow get rid of the Sticky Web and Healing Wish up my Como... Um, and Sylveon is at half, I will be able to win the game just by getting to plus one. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I mean, if my Scizor wasn't burnt, then by just chipping the Rotom down, Como would have a great chance to win the game if Dermanitan... Well, I mean, Dermanitan would have to lock itself into Flare Blitz, and that would be killing itself. So, I mean, that's kind of kind of what I had to hope for. Make Dermanitan wear itself down. Uh, Sylveon need to get it below half so that bullet punch can knock it out or plus one poison jack can guarantee knock it out and at this point i'm just kind of roosting off trying to chip the sylveon down as he ends up going for a baton pass now i'm like okay well this is this is okay i mean something's gonna come in sylveon's kind of low and if i get the right rolls i can maybe come back with my scissor this one dermanitan comes in i'm like okay just gonna go for the super fang try to wear this thing down but unfortunately he does end up to be he does reveal to be either adamant scarfed or banded either way i mean mew does go down but he takes a lot of recoil and so now i'm thinking okay well there's zero way that i'm going to be able to defog and healing wish so i just have to try to put dermanitan into range of bullet punch from my burnt scissor and this is where the fact that i saved como is really going to bite me because if my scissor was not burnt at this point I have a very, very good chance 
of 1v1-ing the rest of his team, just because Rotom would be lower thanks to, even though it was Reflect, it was still a plus one Poison Jab that would have done quite a bit, and he'd be coming in on rocks, didn't have lefties, potentially a Bullet Punch would be able to take it out, but... Yeah, I mean, Dermanitan, even at this range of health, because, like, if Como would have gone down, obviously Der I wouldn't have gotten this little bit of extra chip off on the Dermanitan thanks to Flare Blitz recoil, but I still would have been able to more than likely KO it with Bullet Punch from my Mega Scizor at that range, but that's not the case. Going to go into my Mega Scizor right now and just pray that I can take out the Dermanitan from this point. I mean, I do... 10% minimum up to 17%, so I'm just hoping that, yeah, it does end up taking the Dermanitan out. So it's not a 5-0. I mean, it's just looking like a 4-0 at this point, and if the Sylveon actually does not have Hidden Power Fire, I can win the game, because Rotom Set is revealed. Uh, but he does go immediately into the Sylveon, and I'm like, no way, this thing has HP Fire, I'm gonna lose. Well, not no way, I mean, it makes sense. But if I can get, like, a crit on the Sylveon, then I can win the game, which unfortunately doesn't happen. I mean, had I gotten that, then my Scizor actually would have been able to 1v1 the Rotom, gonna kill the uh, Araquanid, and also taken out the Mega Beedrill at the end of the game as well, just by 1v1ing that thing. But unfortunately, not the case. Sylveon does survive, and it will be able to HP fire my Scizor down to where Burn at the next turn is going to take it out. So, unfortunately, we will lose this game 3-0. We're still able to pull it back from a 3-0, or from a 5-0 to a 3-0, but... Yeah, I, know, I mean, this was a this was a very, very bad loss. I mean, I want to give many props to Irish for how well he played and how well he prepped for this game. But, I mean, I, I don't want to take anything away from Irish because, I mean, he still, again, played and prepped very, very well. But I, yeah, it was, oof. I just made a crap load of mistakes. Like, I was not, I was not playing well, like, Clearly, five exams in nine days took its toll on me, and I, I mean, it just, it happens. Like, you have these games where just IRL stuff does take precedence over Pokemon, unfortunately, and this was one of those instances where everything just kind of came together all in the worst ways, so, yeah, that kind of sucks unfortunately so we do take the l right there but good on irish uh if i do get the chance to play you again just you better watch out because i will be at full mental capacity for that game but either way hope you guys enjoyed watching me get my butt beat like comment subscribe all that good stuff and this is sticks signing out why not see you guys